This is probably the last video of the addition on Size Shop. He's all moved in now. And I just barely got enough footage to be able to show you, you know, the last maybe 30% of the project. But it's enough to give you an idea of what we did. And what we really did was have a fine time, just a fine time, enlarging size work area. And remembering through our efforts what it felt like to be able to do this when we were young and it didn't hurt and the work got done so much quicker. But as I look at this, I realize, man, there's absolutely nothing about this little job that would pass even the most rudimentary safety inspection in corporate construction America. There are safety violations everywhere I look. From the scaffold and its setup and the single planks and no guardrails and no... It, just everything. There's no harness to be found any place. The roof was wet on the second day and slippery and, you know, climbing up and down and hanging by your knees. and All of these things are profoundly unsafe, sort of. You know, safety is entirely best judged according to the perspective of the worker. And historically, that's always the way it's been evaluated. In the same way that beauty is always in the eye of the beholder, at least until it has been defined and codified and maybe put into a textbook, and then beauty begins to become shackled, perhaps, and regimented. Well, safety is the same way, and most of the time that is a darn good thing. I mean, there's a reason that our life expectancy has gone up, and one of them is because job site accidents are much lower than they used to be. And once we got to the point where we decided other people could have responsibility for our welfare, well, then safety began to be codified and defined, and laws have been written. And in a commercial environment, you darn sure better abide by it. But since the dawn of time, men have been confronted with risk. Men have dealt with and evaluated and often been maimed and killed when the risk overwhelmed their preparation. But we accepted that as part of living, part of the cost of living. But not anymore, at least not in the West. And this is at least part of the reason that so much of the world considers us to have become soft and weak and perhaps no longer entitled to the things that we think we are entitled to. Now, our forebearers would have loved personal safety equipment, but it didn't exist. And for most of the history of mankind, the work we have done has been done in a race tempo because wintertime was coming. And like is included in the beautiful musical Les Miserables, the winter was coming on fast, ready to kill. And so the work had to be done because your family had to be protected. And if you had to take a chance to do it, well, you took the chance. Think of the fable of the hound and the hare. You know, the rabbit jumped up and off he went and the hunting dog was sicked on to the hare by the master and the dog ran and ran and the rabbit ran and ran and the rabbit finally wore the dog right out and the hound came home with his tail between his legs and his tongue hanging out with no rabbit to show for his effort and his master ridiculed him 
said that rabbit, that rabbit had a bigger heart than you did. Fine hunting dog you are. And the dog protested, but master, we were running for different stakes. The rabbit was running for, my, for his life, and I was running for my supper. Well, the way our society is developed, our ancestors were all hares. They were all running for their lives all the time. And today, most of us are hounds, and we're jogging along for our suppers. But in this video, all three of us are old, and not one of us would recover from a fall. And we are all old enough and savvy enough to know that we're only kept safe by our own judgment, by our own evaluation of our capacity and what it is we're dealing with. And so we were safe. You know, at one point on the wet morning, I even put a rope around my waist, just an old piece of line that Cy had laying around, and it was adequate. It reassured me. And we got to the end of this, and the shop's up, but it's dry, and the tools are moved in, and nobody got hurt. And we were kept safe by our brains. And the same's true for you. Don't make the mistake of putting your trust for your safety and welfare in the personal protective equipment that is issued to you on the job sites and that your employer is fined for when it's found that you're not wearing it. It's your brain that's going to keep you safe and take you home at night. And that flashy and effective safety gear is just one little part of that equation. But it's not the most important part. So never forget, your safety is your responsibility. And there's no substitute for keeping your eyes open and your head into the game. <laughs>